On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, return of the Danny, Secret Service uses key mod, Biden on his way out, I'm too pretty to go to jail. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is Danny and Marky, and this is episode 345 of the John Knights and Life podcast. Today is July 18th, 2024, at 4.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, I feel the need to timestamp everything because the news comes at us fast and furious. Um, Chief political correspondent is Danny. Danny is back after a long hiatus because, obviously, we're in the middle of the silly season, and he has been chomping at the bit, and... uh, we're, we've got the bulk of the – at least the basic infrastructure of range construction done. So we have full fiber optic internet here at the Death Star, and um, we're able to do podcasts in the middle of the day. So how you been, Danny? Well, this uh, resurrection from the dead feels good. I'm glad that you got hold of me. <laughs> it's been uh, – we, well, between your hectic schedule and my hectic schedule and every other damn thing, I mean, I don't – even have a clue of where we need to start with my contribution of the uh, political side of things. So we could just wing it. Whatever you want to do, I'm good with. We can kind of just wing it because, you know, got to get back in the swing of things. I mean, this would be the third podcast I think John 1911 has put out, I think, in less than seven days. Well, so that's good. Um, that is more, that's more of the schedule I was hoping for. Um, so I guess we need to talk about close calls, and as far as I know, there are two close calls uh, top of mind. The first one would be skimming a 5.56 caliber bullet across Donald Trump's skull. And then the second thing would be apparently a tornado came within 80 feet of your house. Yes, it did. Is that my understanding? Yes, it did. And I had to change my shorts on both occasions. (laughs) Well, Well, hopefully. Yes. He, does Donald Trump's website have have MAGA, MAGA boxers? No, but I do. That, we, <laughs> that might, dude. That might be that. That might be the title of the podcast. I, We're two minutes in. I I hate to disappoint you, but I have a mega thong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know what are you gonna do? You know, so if a tornado comes within 80 feet of your house, does it blow out all the windows? Did, uh, I'm sorry, what'd you say? When a tornado comes within 80 feet of your house, does it blow out all the windows? Or? No, uh, I learned, like I learned, F1? I learned a long, long, long time ago. The worst thing you could ever do during a tornado is have your window shut. So I actually hate each window open six inches from the bottom and inside the house. Due to the winds, a lot of stuff was unmoved, but it li- literally vented in and vented out. Where if your windows are closed, wow. if, you know, if your windows are closed, it seems like a blockage, and that's when a lot more damage seems to happen. We were in the bathroom is in the center of our house, and we we're pretty much, you know, in the tub, in the bathroom. Yeah, was, yeah, it was close. It was very close. So how much? So you knew it was coming. How how much time did you get that you knew it was actually like really going to be close to you? It's exactly what people have always said. It literally is the sound of a freight train. It's a sound you will never forget if you've ever heard it close. Well, I mean, did you hear the freight train sound, or did you get noticed like the hey, sirens, you know, a tornado is crossing well, the sirens, first street? Well, no, but- the sirens went off, and where we live, the sirens only go off when one has been spotted. But it moved with such speed, it seemed, by the time the sirens went off to the time it actually went through, it, it somewhat deviated its path path thank god and we didn't get the full brunt i you know i mean 80 feet away we would have got a lot more but it was just uh we had the sirens and then within five minutes it hit okay yeah in the you know in cincinnati one of the irritations with the local weather weather system in in cincinnati is they've got this habit they blow the sirens for everything they blow the sirens for thunderstorms really they blow the sirens for, you know, for 
you know, maybe a funnel, uh, you know, like, or like there's been movement in the air. Like, yeah, you, it used to be when we were kids, when the sirens went off, one of two things was about to happen. A physical tornado was about to clobber you or a nuclear weapon was about to hit you. Well, that yeah. was it. it none of this, this shit now, they it's, it's ridiculous what they do here. I remember the, uh, the nuclear bomb threats when I was a kid. If we hit under our desk, we were fine. Of course, yeah. You know, with old Joe Biden in office, we may have to go back to that. You know, I mean, <laughs> did you see the vid? Did you, I just saw today. I guess it happened a couple of days ago. Joe Biden trying to walk off that the, walk off the service. Mind you, Joe Biden walking off Air Force One, and he's walking off the service stairs. He's not walking down the jetway thing, the the ramp with the stairs. The you know the the real the front entrance. He's walking down. The service entrance in the back where they, you know, they load all the food and shit. If, yes, and, I did see that. Yes, I did. And when you, you go ahead and finish that, I'll tell you what I seen today. He, I mean, dude, he walks like he's got a board up his ass. If you want to, if mean, you want to see something more, look at the video from yesterday of him walking back up the stairs, leaving Las Vegas. He literally, now I want you to watch that video. He, he was escorted up to the base stair, and then he went up on his own, if that's what you want to call it. But what I find ironic is that the person that escorted him up to the bottom stair, he let Biden go on his own, and you could tell by they showed his, the, the face, the man at the base of the stairs that escorted Biden, he looked like he was ready to catch him. It really did. He really did. I mean, wow. you have to look at that. So I was wondering, as soon as we had watched that, did Biden tell him no for the camera? Let's let it show that I could go up on my own unescorted. I wonder if his aide was actually told not to help him. Yeah, I mean, you know, they were doing that weird thing. I mean... All right, we got we got to we got to wind this back up, okay? And this is an example. We have talked about this, and this is kind of old news, but you know, we need we need to illustrate something to the listener. Like, okay, in what universe is the idea that oh my God, Joe Biden is senile only been in people's minds since the night of the debate? It's like the media, it's like, it's like this fake story. It's, it's like, it's just totally fake. Like, oh my God, like he's, he, he's, he's not, he's non compass mentis. There's problems here. And it's like, well, okay. I mean, if, if Donald Trump need, had a bunch of people basically walking, you know, you know, walking a circuit around him as he shuffled to the helicopter so you couldn't tell how crippled he was. The media, oh no, here's a better one. Here, no, here it is. Donald Trump was at West Point. I remember this. Donald Trump was at West Point, probably for the graduation, because he was up on a stage, and they've got this red carpet, and whoever ramps, there's ADA ramps and banisters and all stuff. Donald Trump's wearing his fancy, you know, shoes. I mean, he wears, you know, some kind of dress shoe, and... I don't know if it was wet that day. So Donald Trump's going down a ramp and he's taking slower steps and he's holding on to a banister because it's not it's it's a ramp. It's not steps. And he was just taking these slower steps because he was just being careful going down this ramp. The media for three days wouldn't shut up. What's wrong with Donald Trump? Is he sick? But now suddenly all this crap with Donald Trump or crap with Biden is like a shock. <laughs> To people. And it's like, I mean, like all of these news outlets just need to be flushed. I mean, the destruction that's coming for all of them is deserved. I mean, I hope they all go out of business. I mean, like, you know, this, you know, but this idea that they can just continually lie. And then when the lie gets exposed, they pretend like it's breaking news. But like I had when we had talked earlier, I asked you, the media, especially after the debate, finally 
showed how Biden really was. Well, they, they, they had to admit well, it because you couldn't right, hide it anymore. But 40 million people seen it. But here's the thing I want to ask. If Biden, dude, you, dude, dude, let's be, let's be real. A billion people saw that debate, right? But around the world saw right. that debate. Easily a billion. All people. right, but here's the thing: with him and that in that mental state or congenitive state, whatever you want to call it, who is running the country? Oh, that's easy. Joe Biden is running part of it, and then there's some 25-year-old nihilistic staffers in the in the, in the West Wing that are running it. And I can prove it. And I knew that we didn't get a chance to do this on pod because we were busy and you weren't around. And, you know, we saved the political stuff for the chief political correspondent. You remember on Easter, Easter Sunday, and... The White House on Easter Sunday, and like let's 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 have basic religion 101 for people. You know, I'm not rubbing my religion in anybody's face, and I'm certainly not what people would call a good Catholic. Okay, but it's fine. Christmas is not the highest holy day of Christianity. I think a lot of secular people don't realize that it's actually Easter. Correct. Like people are people are so concerned about Ramadan, but they don't understand that Easter is the day. Like it's the yes, day. That's right. No kid, no fooling. Okay? Because that's when Jesus came back to life. He is risen. Risen. So on Easter Sunday, the White House issues a statement saying that Sunday is the was it the trans day of visibility or some happy horse shit. And look, I don't care about trans day of visibility. I'm not offended by it. But what that but when I saw that, when I saw that, I knew at that moment, I was like, Joe Biden's not in charge. He's 100 percent not in charge. Because here's the thing. Look, whatever what people think of Joe Biden and Joe Biden today, you have to realize that isn't the Joe Biden of of for the past 50 years. Joe Biden was very popular, very very congenial, not, not, un, you know, not dumb politician. He was what we would call a retail politician. He's a lot like Bill Clinton. Okay, Joe Biden come into the room, slap you on the back. Hey, how's it going, buddy? You know, he he. If, if I admit, twenty years ago, Joe Biden could have walked into the armory and shook my hand and tried to pretend like he's known me for the for twenty years. And he was real good at that. And he's not a stupid person. And so he's not going to do stuff to alienate people right in front of him or to hurt his chances politically. Joe Biden of 20 years ago in no White House, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, would have ever released a comment on Easter Sunday on Twitter saying that this is the trans day of whatever they called it like trans day of visibility or recognition or whatever they were trying to say, because it's so stupid. And it, and it tells me who would do that. Joe Biden wouldn't do that. And Joe Biden is so non compass mentis. I'm like, who would do this? A 25 year old nihilistic New York communist would do that because that little douchebag isn't trying to run for re-election isn't a skilled politician isn't an experienced you know policy wonk person this is just a kid running a twitter account who doesn't know shit from shinola and it's like today is going to be you know we're going to stick to him and that's so because it's our religion and we're going to do this and we're going to do that and it's just like when i saw that i knew there's big trouble in that west wing because normally, even if somebody had done that, boom, that would have come down. There would have been a statement from the communications office, and there would have been, we're holding people accountable, X, Y, Z, one, two, and three. Joe Biden hasn't been in charge for a long time. And, you know, I'm not saying Joe Biden isn't running the, isn't the president, but, you know, we're all pretty certain that they're able to treat Joe Biden the way Obi-Wan treats the stormtroopers. This is not the policy you're looking for. And Joe's like, this is not the policy I'm looking for. 
and he's just being manipulated by little douchebags and his crazy wife. Well, let's talk about Jill for a minute. Do you think Jill? Yeah. How do you think history is going to judge Jill Biden when this all comes? Manipulative. Out? I think she's going to go down as the biggest harpy bitch in like possibly American political history. Yeah, she and, she does like um, flaunting her position. I mean, it's like elder abuse, gold digging. It's crazy. Like they all talk about, you know, Woodrow Wilson was incapacitated for a long time, and, and Woodrow Wilson's wife, they say, ran the country for a little while. And, you know, like Jill Biden, you know, she walked him off the stage, you know, at the Normandy thing. She walked him off the stage at the, you know, at the debates with Trump. I mean, she, uh, what was the other one she had? Like, well, if you even w- watch the guy when he's coming off the airplane yesterday, he stops halfway down the uh, the stairs and he kind of starts turns left and right like he doesn't know where he's going. He's like, hey, what am I doing? And she knows, and she's the one, she could be saying, Joe, let's go home to Delaware. And he'd be like, let's go home to Delaware. But she's obviously not. No. Did you hear the, did you, he, did you hear the rumor? Did you hear all the rumors about Joe Biden? No. Well, there's rumors, but which one's in uh, particular? Which ones have you heard first? You go first. Because I don't want to talk the whole time. You haven't been on pod for a while, so you need to tell, you need to talk, all right. bitch. <laughs> I got your bitch. I got your bitch right in my Trump underwear. Anyway, <laughs> um, what I heard basically is that she will not let Joe bow out because if he bows out, there goes her limelight. All right. And with herself mm-hmm. out of the limelight, I don't think that she has the capacity to accept that so i still say i'm probably wrong oh as i was wrong on my on the vice president pick but i oh we'll get to that oh, in a i minute. knew you would are you, are you but anyway are you are you are you picking up dinner on wednesday <laughs> eh, we have to anyway um long story short is that i still say that all of these let's say, so-called senators and congressmen that are telling Joe not to run is being completely orchestrated against Joe Biden from an outside source. I think these people that are wanting Biden not to run are, I don't want to say pain, I think are cowtailing to a higher authority. That's what I really think. And Jill Biden wanting to stay the limelight will sacrifice Joe all the way up and through the convention. I don't think Biden will bow out. Well, there's a couple problems for that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so the first thing is I predicted that Kamala Harris will end up being the 47th president of the United States. Um, whether she's president for a month or whether she's president for a month and four years, I don't know. It's looking less likely that the four-year part will happen, but there's you never know. Um, but the fact that Joe Biden is going to make it, it – like he's been so debilitated this year that, you know, actuarially – I mean I'm trying to be – because again, I'm not like a Democrat that prays for the death of Donald Trump. Actuarially – Joe Biden is the numbers are not looking good for him. Okay. So there's that problem where they're not that acknowledgement. So Jill also, you know, she, she likes being first lady. She likes being Dr. Jill Biden. Right. P H. You know, PhD. she likes having this. She likes, I, yeah, I know she likes, she has a PhD in like, was it education or something? Not even that. It's something crazy. Um, I ever tell you the story about the woman I dated had a PhD in education? Um, it's crazy. It's just bonkers. So anyway, um, she likes being first lady because she gets a chief of staff. She gets a spokesperson. She gets an office. She's in the East Wing. She gets a lot of the trappings. A lot of former first ladies basically are relegated to nothing. 
unless your husband's a billionaire or you have a, a, a billion dollar, um, unless you have a billion dollar, you know, family foundation like the Clinton, the Clinton Foundation that they try to set up for Hillary. So, so she's incentivized to not want to give any of that up. I don't know how loyal she is to Hunter Biden, but you know, if Joe gives, if Joe, I don't know if Joe can give a pardon to Hunter. I guess he could give a future pardon. I don't, you know, I don't know. Hunter Biden hasn't been fully adjudicated through the system yet. And I don't know if they may want to see if they can hold off on having to give him a pardon before they leave. And if they have to leave, they're going to want to give Hunt. They're going to want to clear the decks for Hunter. Right. The Biden family is before they leave. And, you know, possibly it might even come to a situation where they try to issue some kinds of pardons possibly to the brother um, who is apparently somehow involved in some of this stuff, right. money raising, but you know, we'll see. But then there's another thing. The rumor is, and it seems to be pretty substantiated that Jill Biden hates Kamala Harris. I have read that several times myself. Like absolutely with a deep burning passion. But, Hates that. Bitch. Well, there's somebody else on that boat with uh, Kamala too. And you know who that is? Well, everybody, Michelle Obama. Everybody she hates them both. Well, well, hold on, I hadn't heard that one. But I, but I, okay, I do know. Like, no one likes Kamala because. Well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But okay, so Jill apparently hates Kamala, and apparently Jill is still super pissed off at Kamala for. Um, you know, Kamala getting at the one debate saying that I'm the little girl, the, the busing and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it basically called her husband a racist. Uh, but during during the primaries and Jill apparently has never has never forgiven Kamala for that. And that probably pay, plays a big part in Kamala being sidelined as a vice president with any type of authority or power in the administration. That certainly doesn't help. But apparently Kamala does not want or Jill does not want. Kamala to be president, which is if you think about this, so if you just think about this for a minute, this is why I'm really paying close attention to Jill Biden here. Jill, everyone's talking about Joe. Everyone's talking about Kamala. No one's really paying attention to Jill. And when all this comes out and heaven forbid, bad stuff starts to happen. And I got one more bad thing to say about Jill. It's this bolt out of the blue stuff. If Jill Biden is selfish because she wants to stay first lady and stay powerful, if she's selfish because even though Joe Biden shouldn't be president, she really is manipulating the situation to keep him as president. If Jill Biden is deciding just for personal animus, she doesn't want Kamala to be president and putting the needs of the country ahead of herself, but she won't do that. Because the reality is Kamala Harris is quite qualified to be president, okay? And, you know, um, the other thing is, and this is going to come out, it's been kind of coming out. The current director of the U.S. Secret Service, the woman is um, Cheadle. I can't remember her first name because I, I remember it's Don Cheadle. But, you know, the woman, you've, you've, you've heard the story about the woman saying the reason why they didn't have snipers or people on the roof of the building was because the roof was pitched. Did you get? Did you hear did that? You get the meme I sent. The anti-government rant. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, then, like you know, it's like you know, needless, to, you know, she forgets. It's like, oh, you realize the other sniper teams are on pitched roofs, you know, that are even more steeply pitched. It's like, oh, so like that came out, and you're like, I'm like, oh, okay. So you're either a liar or you're a moron. Okay. So at this point, it's like, oh, okay. Okay, because at this point I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to really hold it against her. But it was like the fact that she would make a comment like that. Well, do you know where this woman comes from? The current director of the U.S. Secret Service? She was – Tell the listener. She was Jill Biden's head of security um, when Biden was vice president for all those years. And as a a favor to her, when – old uncle joe was elected she had joe's ear to give her that position 
Correct. So oh, let's, again, right for once. we're all we're all coming back to Jill Biden here. OK, Jill hates Kamala and won't do what's best for the country. Jill won't let Joe retire, won't do what's best for the country. Jill installs this moron or morons into the Secret Service. That's it, honestly is, a, is an organization that's had some trouble. They've had some trouble with hookers and blow and some other things um, and some of these trips. But this woman that she's installed is all about, you know, the diversity of people as opposed to their qualifications. And, you know, I'm so glad I posted a video D- about diversi- the, only, the most important. Right, diversified employment initiative or inclusion or whatever it is, DEI. Yeah, well. But I posted a video on our social media. We're like, what's the best drill I can learn? What do I really focus on? And I'm like, from a practical standpoint, as an American shooter, because most American shooters in America, when they go shooting, they start with the gun up. And then they're like, they, you know, okay, let's get started. And they start shooting. Like, I'm really accurate. They don't practice drawing from the holster and they don't practice reholstering. Uh, <laughs> American shooters. And I'm like, y'all need to work on that. And like four days later, after I put that video up, you see these girls – that are fumbling, fumbling these guns it, at the. It was uh, pathetic. At the, it was pathetic. It, it, it was pathetic, but there, it's not all. There was more than just the individual skill of the of that the one woman in particular. Okay, she's a short woman. She's wearing high rise pants with suspenders. I don't know if she's got to wear suspenders because she's got more shit on her belt. She's got a back belt. Okay, she's wearing body armor and she's wearing a high rise holster. I'm all for high rise holsters because most holsters sit too deeply in people's belt lines and they can't snatch the gun out. But this woman, she's kind of out of shape. She's wearing a high belt line, high rise holster and body armor. And she can't even, you know, if she misses her holster, she can't even turn to look to see the holster. The reality is any training officer looking at her. Should have been able to be like, hey, I think your shit's a little fucked up because I don't think you're going to be able to, you know, to look that holst- look that gun in that holster. Like some of that is on like to let her go out dressed like that and be like, hmm, maybe you should think about dropping some weight. It's like, well, you know, weight isn't an issue. I can I can see this or I can do that. All right. Well, can you do all that with body armor on? I don't know. Well, I guess you better lose some weight. Hate to fucking tell you this, but this is just how it goes. This is what training officers are for. But apparently – So now Jill Biden is tangentially involved in somebody shooting Donald Trump. Nobody sees this coming, but Jill Biden quite possibly is going to end up going down as the most hated and reviled first ladies in American history. You can just you can see it coming. And it's like nobody's talking about this yet. Because there's going to be all this stuff that comes out from the, from the West Wing where, you know, like, oh, yeah, the, you know, like I saw this and I saw that and I did this and I did that. And Joe was, you know, they, you know, they, sh- before Joe went somewhere, they shot vitamin B in his ass or whatever to get him all doped up to, to do stuff. And everybody's being quiet right now. But once it starts cracking and people are out and they're writing their books or telling their stories man it is going to it is going to it's going to be terrible and the only thing i guess left to come out will be to find out if jill if jill biden is like some raging crazy person because apparently kamala is apparently a raging crazy person well um, she she has more turnover than just about anybody in the in the executive branch right there's now. a video that also came out this morning that the lady head of secret service She decided last night to show up to the RNC and two Republican senators cornered her and were completely screaming at her, reminding her, hey, look, you answer to us. You work for us. When we ask you questions, you will answer. She totally walked away ignoring them with her tail between her legs. So I'm anxious to see what's going to come out of this. I mean, these Republican senators were, they, they, I've never seen them on the attack like that. It was unbelievable. Well, well, okay. Let's be real. 
And again, I'm a conservative. I'm voting for Donald Trump, but let's not make shit up here. I'm not making that these up. These senators, no, 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 no. But these senators, let's not pretend. I don't even know who these senators were. I haven't seen any of this. I've been dealing with Amish this morning. They did whatever they did. They did it so they could be on camera to do the gotcha game. And so that's really to promote themselves because the truth is, yeah, she she does answer to oversight from members of Congress. And, you know, obviously she, you know, would give professional courtesy. But if it was if the roles were reversed, if it was a Republican director of the U.S. Secret Service showing up with some event for whatever reason, and then like two Democratic crazy commie senators are trying to ambush this person, this, per, he, this person would walk away as well. And so I don't want to make too much of that, but I think what did her in is when she came out with that whole like that whole you know the whole angle All thing. Have roof. you seen the video? <laughs> yeah, the slanted roof thing. People are now sending out pictures of the cow that got on the roof of the barn. I sent that. If I you, sent I, that to you. <laughs> yeah, is that? Yeah, I saw that years ago, and it's just like, oh boy, this is not good. It's like she's. I don't. She. I would, and, and, and this could be an example of a normal of, of how Joe Biden's not really in charge because in a normal functioning White House, she would probably be out, or they would be processing her to be on the way out somehow. They would be floating like a possible replacement. They'd be making, you know, so like, yeah, hey, you know, by the end of August, she may want decide to, you know, pursue other opportunities. But right now, it looks like everything is just on autopilot, and she's going to probably end up staying. Until after January twenty first or whatever it would be. Right. Well, here's here's the thing. Trump actually came out and said, "You're if you work in the Biden administration, no matter how bad you mess up, you're safe because he fires nobody," which is the truth. But because she's Jill's buddy, she's not going nowhere. Exactly like you said, until after the next president is sworn in. There also may be a problem where Jill, maybe the limits of her power and whomever works in the White House, because, you know, it's like, again, you know, the president can go, I want this person out of here. But if all of a sudden there's a contentious separation of a particular individual and this particular individual starts raising a stink saying, I don't think the president ordered me to be fired. I want to see the president or I want to write a letter to the president. I want to go public. I think it, it, all of this causes more problems and paralysis when they're trying to maintain the lie. You know, I mean, like if Donald Trump decides I've worked, if I worked at the executive branch and Donald Trump decided to fire Markey from John 1911, it's like, I want to talk to the president. I'm like, fuck you. Get out of here, moron. You know what I mean? But like, they're so afraid of anyone questioning anything. They probably can't. They can't make hard decisions. Do you think that, especially from the debate on and the assassination attempt and Biden trying to go up and down stairs and this, that, all his different interviews, as more and more get exposed of how Biden's mental state really is, I'm actually thinking that this is coming from within the Democratic Party to discredit him. I mean, it's not hard to discredit with what he has because they are trying to pave their own road to have him out and put in who they want. I really feel that. It's just, but the way that I was doing reading on this, of course, as my job, which you pay me heavily for, only, I do. only Biden can remove Biden. Because remember, Biden won every primary. All of those delegates, by um, rule, belong to him. If he doesn't release them, they're still his. It doesn't matter. So all of a sudden now, the DNC wants to hold a um, audio, some type of voice vote before the convention. It's I. I can't understand how the Democrats could circumvent the rules that are already in place. It's they had planned the voice vote to try to as a way to get to get Biden across the finish line um, without having to like make all this stomping around the convention because at the convention 
the convention, you know, you've got delegates and they belong to certain people. And it's probably they have to vote for their person on the first round, like whoever, you know, they, they represent like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Biden delegate. So I have to vote for Biden on the first round of the delegate count. But the, um, the Democrats have something that the Republicans don't, unless they changed it. No one's talked about it yet, but excuse me. And this is where an example of the Democrats are kind of unfair. Or if you're a statist, you know, maybe you like this and you think this is fair. Um, they have something called super delegates. And so what it is, there are people that are members of the DNC and they each have like Donna Brazil, I think is one. And there's very, some of these people you've heard of and some of these people you have and they come and they go. But I think each one of these people has like a thousand delegates to their name. And so what can happen away, it's like a circuit breaker system. It's how it literally, it's the super delegate system that kept uh, Bernie Sanders from getting the nomination in 2016. And so once they, once they do the rounds of voting and they go through the delegates between possibly being able to release first round voting delegates for Joe Biden and then the super delegates, they could potentially push someone else over. But there's other problems here. It's too late. It's, it's, it's too late to replace Joe Biden other unless you just want to put Kamala on. There's also the money situation. All the money that's been raised for Biden Kamala has to stay with Biden and Kamala. So, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're telling people like Gavin Newsom and these other, these other Democrats that they have to go from a standing start. It's the middle of July all of a sudden firing up a campaign. They can't even be on all the ballots in the States. So and it's like, and one of the issues like people like Gavin had earlier in the year was, I mean, they knew that Biden was fucked up. Like they knew when Gavin was going around doing visits and talking to the media and, you know, they're in there and they were all saying, Oh, you're going to, you're going to try to run. You're going to do this. You be, you know, Biden going to step down. They knew Biden was fucked up. But the thing is they didn't want to be in a position. Gavin didn't want to be the guy because the debate hadn't happened yet and the media wasn't was still lying about Biden. Gavin didn't want to be the guy that was credited with derailing Biden, short circuiting the campaign. Either Biden loses or Gavin gets the nomination, then loses because he can't really get a full campaign running. And then and then Gavin goes down to some douchebag that wrecked Biden. And so and the thing is Gavin doesn't want to run and lose. Gavin decided months ago, he's like, well, too late for me. I'm gonna, I guess I'll do 2028. And if they were to offer it to Gavin Newsom, he wouldn't take it right now. You don't think so? Fuck no. Because he'd be a loser. True. True. He'd be a loser. Well, um, this is my theory. You And I think you might agree with it in part, but you're right. I feel Kamala will be the 47th president, maybe for only a few weeks. I think after the convention that Biden is going to step down, despite what Jill thinks. She'll be sworn in because now the Democrats can tote, oh, even though it's very short lived, Kamala has it. Well, now wait a minute. You're ma- you're making two. You're making two separate. You're making two well, separate let me, let, let problems me here. I th- I think if okay. this I think if this is going to happen and they do go this way with it, they the Democrats can say, "Oh, Kamala has incumbency, even if it's for a month." But they'll push it. I really feel that. I really feel that. But the other side of me, this is where I make it my two different arguments. I don't think Jill will let Joe give it away. I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to read these Democrats and their MOs, but it's, it's just so many irons in the fire. Which one do you read? It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, in my opinion, there's two issues, okay? Um, you know, you could have made an argument earlier in the year that Biden could have said, I will not seek and you know, I will not accept my party's nomination to be president of the United States. Do a Lyndon Johnson. Right. Kamala can run or maybe other people can run. It's too late now. And so maybe there's a debate where it's like 
they try to, you know, they try to, they try to get Jill to talk Joe into giving, you know, not only not running for reelection, but stepping down and then Kamala can run. Cause and I predicted this, I predicted this when it first happened. The second vice president Kamala Harris becomes president, she will, they will lionize her. She will be a woman of the ages. She will be a historic figure, first female president, black president, Indian president. She'll be, she'll be, you know, they will, you know, they'll do stories about her. They'll do interviews with her. She'll, they will turn her into a celebrity, you know, overnight. They will make her into this historic statuesque figure that, you know, and she'll be this hero to save the party. And look, and I hate to tell my Republican friends this, if y'all think that the Democrat can't win in 2024, you know, they somehow pulled it off in, in, in 2020 and the red wave in 2022 didn't happen either. And so between ballot harvesting people voting that don't exist and ballot stuffing and all this other stuff. And the election at the end of the day is still going to come down to if, if Virginia's in play, it's they're in big trouble, but it's going to come down to Pennsylvania because Ohio is really not in play. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. Um, you could Nevada. possibly say Nevada and, uh, but, but it's going to be, it's going to be Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, um, maybe Minnesota. I'm not so sure about that, but you know they say. But if Virginia, if well, some people even say Virginia could be in play, which to me is that I mean, it would be over. Well, at that point well no, for, it's, for, it's, for the it's Democrats. Funny you say that because the new poll t- showed today that since the attempt on Trump, he is now up three points in Virginia. It's swang. Well, sure he is, but is he going to be up three points in November? Because the shooting, you know, the news cycle is about 72 right. hours, and that's going to be old news. And, you know, and, there, and there's all these Democrats going around saying that, you know, dude, there's all these Democrats going around saying that that was a false flag, that that was, uh, that was a staged thing. Democrats are literally saying that somebody skimmed a five five six caliber bullet off Donald Trump's skull as a false flag to get him elected. And that's just how crazy the world is right now. And it's just like, okay. But you know, and you know what else is interesting? It's interesting, all of these Democrats, like Jack Black and, you know, some of these politicians coming out like, ooh, try harder, don't miss, don't do that, whatever. You know, and it's it's easy, you know, to sit on my side of the fence and be like, you dirtbags. And, and I, I've done it on this podcast, but I can tell the listener here, you because know, we were really worried about someone even remotely taking a credible run at President Barack Obama or candidate Barack Obama at the time. And, you know, on our Facebook page, we had, I mean, for, for eight years, it was monkey this, assassinate that, impeach this, do that, like all this crazy shit. And we were having a block, delete, and ban, block, delete, and ban. All the time. And if the roles are reversed and somebody skims something off of old Barry's head, there would have been a lot of prominent Republicans that would have been making these asinine comments and look just as bad. So the holier than thou treatment that a lot of us are, are, are giving people, I'm like, mm, be careful what you wish for because it's the law of unintended consequences because, you know, the silly season is not over. And you could easily see another attempt on another politician. At this point, things are so out of control, you could actually, it would not be much of a stretch to envision a radical leftist making a run at, I don't even want to say the name because I just don't want this to happen, could make a run at a prominent Democratic politician because they're mad that they're not getting out of the way and going to give it to Trump. Yeah, that's a good point. But, you know, we wouldn't... Okay, mm-hmm. let, but let's get back to square one. Uh, we're, we're, we're going in a little bit of a circle here. We would not be having this conversation 
if the Secret Service did their job correctly. Let's call it where it is. You could, come on, 148 yard direct line of fire sight. Totally. Oh, I'm, I'm here and I'm getting messages and reports from people. And again, I don't know if the reports are accurate, but they're saying that supposedly that building that this kid on the, was on the roof of is a building that counter sniper, police counter snipers were based in. I, and, I had heard you know, that. Now I'm know. hearing reports. I am hearing reports from local law enforcement that are saying we only have eight officers. We don't have any snipers. Like you have regional teams or people can come in, you know, and it's just like, I don't know what's true and what's not true. But if it turns out that this kid, because they're, now they're trying to surmise that the kid came on property before the event, stashed a rifle and then got up on the roof. But now you're hearing saying that they could have been counter sniper units in that building using windows as overwatch. And I'm, we know snipers that do that kind of stuff because that's, they shoot here. And it's not much of a stretch. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this, you know, they're all reporting. They're all reporting that, you know, this kid used his dad's AR and yeah, I'm sure he did. Man, but there's a bunch of gear in that, in that freaking building. What if it comes out that there was police rifles in that building unattended because the cops are up, you know, or, you know, someone's supposed to be in there, but they're cooking weenies or I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. And so I'm trying to be more open minded. That's why I tell people to, you know, kind of chill out on what they hear and not, you know, take it all in, but be, be critical of everything because all these reports we're getting, a lot of it will end up being incorrect like, I remember one of the first pictures that somebody posted on the internet of the shooter of Donald Trump, and it was a black guy. That just disappeared. That literally disappeared in the vapor. Nobody talks about it. It's like, yeah, first reports are almost always wrong. I don't, I don't know if it was an AI-generated image, if it was a person, if someone put it out as fake. Like, I'll put a picture of my buddy up. Like, I don't know what that was, but it, it, it disappeared. And so one thing that I've made it a habit of doing is when people send me, especially off Twitter, if people send me stuff and it seems important, not only do I save it, I screen grab it. Because if Twitter deletes it, it goes away. But I got the screen grab. I'm like, ah, let's go back and look at this one. Because it's, it, this is, just, I don't know what we know yet. Well, what we do know is know. Trump was shot. By the grace of God, it wasn't a complete headshot. He did turn his head, but it, let's just call it like it is. How can anyone be that open to have that line of fire? Something, someone messed up. Well, okay, and I guess this is the point I was going to make before, and I kind of... Okay, you know how the left, I made the comment about the left says that, you know, that this is a false flag, and they hired some kid who's a registered Republican to skim a bullet off Donald right. Trump's ear. Because what the people in California that aren't gun people know about guns, they know from Hollywood. Well, unfortunately, there's people that argument still translates to the audience of this podcast. Okay, there's a lot of people that think that the Secret Service is like this omnipotent whatever group, and it's like. All right, whatever image you have of the Secret Service and the president, all right, just whatever that is, we'll call that the A-team, like the first group. And it's the whoever the sitting president is, and that is a giant group of people. And it's billions of dollars of equipment. It, they have a counter-assault team that is capable of fighting off Russian paratroopers attacking the president so then another group can take the president and fight their way away. They can literally counter assault they are an infantry level unit they are they have they have the ability to deal with ieds radiological attacks biological attacks aircraft attacks missile attacks rocket attacks like just crazy shit you know they talk about drones and i remember people talking about donald trump and they're like well where are the drones at and it's like Holy shit, dog. I don't mean to be a dick, but Donald Trump is a former president. Like, even though he's running for president and he gets more Secret Service protection and he's the guy that killed Soleimani, he should get more Secret Service protection. It's like, do you think 
when Barack Obama goes to dinner tonight with his Secret Service detail, that there's a drone flying over the restaurant? Uh, it's like the answer is no. <laughs> well, there's something. There's something <laughs> on the outside of that restaurant watching. I, I, I here's yeah. the thing. How can right ooh. right now right before the day of the attack, the day of the attack, and here's the thing, Barack. Think about this. Barack Obama is the guy that killed. Technically, the president that killed Osama bin Laden. Man, Al Qaeda, if they're still around or sympathizers, are never going to give that up. Right. You know, and it's like, you know, I mean, he's he's got Secret Service protection. And I guarantee you, I can't guarantee it. I'm willing to bet $100 that Donald Trump had more Secret Service protection the day of that rally than Barack Obama has when he's in transit just moving through life. Yeah. It, and if he doesn't, if 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 he doesn't, that could be a problem. And this is all going to come out in investigations, right? Yeah, Trump has the he has the security three five foot three women, the size of Mrs. Danny, trying to guard a six foot four man. Did I see? Did I send you the picture of his uh, his convoy going into the RNC yes. yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> there were no women. I don't know. The vehicles are all clocked yeah. up, but dude. I saw I saw a war wagon in that convoy. They, I mean, they had crew serve weapons <laughs> in that fucking convoy. No, I'm serious. There was shit in that convoy. It didn't have all the heavy communications gear, but there was a, there was one for sure. There was one war wagon in there, and there, I mean, they're ready to lay it down. Uh, oh, uh, they, they probably had, had sparrow. It's a they whole new sparrow and aim missiles and everything in that thing. Well, the current president does. Yeah. The, the, cur- the current president of the United States, in his Secret Service detail, they have anti-aircraft missiles with them. The, I don't even have to. I don't even have to prove it. <laughs> they do. <laughs> now, would Trump have that? Well, I don't know. possibly did you, yesterday. Did you, see, probably. did you see Trump walk into the RNC? Every secret with his bandage. Well, no. The secret service. Yeah, the guys. everyone was six foot to six four, and there was like yeah. twelve of them. Now, now so one. Finally, one, they acknowledge after all these years, Donald Trump is six or whatever three or whatever is, he yeah. is. But I'm six, what one. I'm saying is, there was not one five foot three woman that couldn't reholster her weapon. Yeah, and you know, like I mean. I made the point, like going back to the women, and again, this is a shitty thing to say, but unfortunately, life is shitty. You know, like those two women, okay, at the Trump at the event, just the two. The, there was the there was the round one that couldn't reholster. Then there was one with the long hair, and and the one that was and ducking behind the podium. One, well, and that still ended up being one of the two. Um, um, those two women, if one of those women had been injured or incapacitated, could the other woman have picked the other agent up to medically evacuate her, to get her, I mean, if anything, to get her out of the way, should drag her body out of the way so they don't have to run over her as they're, you know, running out with the, with, with, with Trump's vehicle. And the answer is no. And then imagine those two women trying to carry Trump. And it's like, I mean, I just like, I'm just this whole, like, I'm, I used to be more politically correct when I was younger. And as I've gotten older and more experienced, you know, I, I come to believe I, I don't think people should become cops that can't fight. And I'm not saying women can't be cops because women bring skills that other people don't. Women can de-escalate. Women can kind of maybe check the egos a little bit. They can communicate. Women can go into women's spaces. But don't kid yourself, Okay. Being a firefighter, being a cop, being a soldier means you be able to be able to swap swap some fucking shit with people, and be able to take some damage and still deliver it. And those, that one woman, the woman who couldn't holster the gun, I question her ability to even be able to pull herself up on top of a um, on top of another vehicle. And like part of the reason why those women are on that detail, and I pointed this out on pictures. Like Donald Trump, he had a secure, he had a bulletproof vehicle. But if you look at the door, it's not like the Cadillac that the president gets. Like that door is like almost a foot thick. 
Well, these women, and, they, and I'm not making this up. I remember this coming up in other issues with the Secret Service. These women probably couldn't actually open that door. I don't disagree. They were at the, yeah, and it's like I, you know, I hate to say it. Well, that might be part of the reason why they are with Trump because he doesn't have the heavy duty vehicle. And it's like, well, you know, also you're a new agent, but it's also it's like, well, in an emergency, if it's just if it's down to the last two agents and it's these two women and everyone else is dead, they can't even fucking open a door or take student to open up a door. Well, that's just not well, good. that's part of the uh, the director's, you know, DEI initiative. She actually said she wants 30 percent of women on on the force. <laughs> You know, I want, I want what I want. I want my female secret service agents to be like, what was that? What was that character's name in Aliens? Was it Rodriguez? Oh, right, right, right. The right. woman who carried the the woman in Aliens, and she carried the. It was an M four. Actually, they had written like an M forty uh, MG forty two, uh, and she had it on this mount, and you know, she muscles and freaking. I mean, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you be woman. You protected me. You better be the biggest muscular bull dyke bitch <laughs> inside of the Mississippi. It's like, cause I'm gonna be like, what the fuck are you gonna do for oh, me? I mean, I want, I, I want your ass rolling. Speaking heavy. Speaking of weapons, when they like, okay, like you, do you know, do you know what I'm okay with? Hey, look, I've got a political compromise here. What's the name of the swimmer that acts like a woman that everyone's all pissed oh, off about? Damn you, um, Leah right. Thomas. Leah Thomas, I would be okay if Leah Thomas wants to work on a security detail. Because Leah Thomas is like six, seven right. or some shit. It's like, yeah, okay, that'd be fine. Like, all right, you know, if I can, you know, you want to agree here like that. Did I'll, yeah, I'll call you, ma'am. Did you <laughs> see fine, Leah Thomas? Yeah, did you see the. Yeah. You're in the wrong sport. Yeah. Did you see the still pictures of the sniper team, you know, up on the roofs of the day of Trump? Trump's incident. Could you identify what kind of rifles they were using? Yeah, um, somebody told me. Um, uh, I think it was the uh, Akatar scope. Akatar. It's is that a night force? It's, look, uh, um, I they, couldn't identify they, it. Somebody identified. I, I think it was. Um, uh, it was. Uh, hold on, give me a second. It was um, Joseph R. I think he said it was he had zoomed in on it. I think he said it was a, a the Actar scope A T A C. I never know how to pronounce it. Um, the I'm looking at. He sent me even a zoomed in picture. Is that a is that a Remington 700 action? Is that Accuracy International? I couldn't tell. It looks like a maybe a I Remington. I wonder what it was chambered in. I'm thinking at least 300 Win Mag. Mm. Yeah, I just don't know because they they may want distance. It could be like a six five PRC or three yeah, could mag be. or um, I don't I don't know. I'm looking at it. Or it could be like an MDT type system that looks kind of like an Accuracy International style chassis. Um, but I'm not I'm not certain. I'm looking at it now, but I'm not certain. Um, that. Could be three oh eight. I don't know. That's kind of a big mag for three oh eight. That's why I, I I was thinking. But I don't. Uh, the wind mag. Oh shit! Wait a minute. I just realized something. Unless I'm unless I need glasses, which I do kind of do. But this is this is for all the. Uh, this is going to be for the for the John Knight Eleven Gun people. This sniper on this roof, his forehead, I think he's got key mod on it. You know, and it's like, oh, is that key mod? It's like, yeah, you know, I mean, all the cool kids say you got to have M lock or, you know, you're going to die in the streets. This, you know, the guy's like, fuck you, I got key mod. I just get the conversion pieces. It's, it's lighter uh, anyway. I just thought that was funny. I'm like, oh, yeah, can't, got to have the, you got to have the M lock. It's like, there's a, Active sniper that may have shot a guy protecting President Trump. The dude may be a hero. I, I don't heard, know which sniper I heard shot. He got fired. That's a I, well, I know, uh, but that's the rumor going around that the director. That's fake. That's twake. That's twake. Fit fake Twitter bullshit. That's right. not real. Uh, apparently, one. Apparently, I don't know who the person is that shot 
The, P, the photographs that everybody's using, including us, of the snipers on the roof may not be the snipers that actually shot the, the attacker. But my understanding is um, the, um, the, the sniper that did shoot the, uh, the attacker apparently is a, quote, legendary sniper in, the, in their community because he's for his, known for accompl- uh, he's a very accomplished long-range shooter. Mm. I don't know if that's a Remington action on like a, a, because it's got this water, it's got this roll mark on the left side of the receiver that kind of reminds me of Remington, but it's got a chassis. It's got a chassis. You know what? That is a Remington action because the Accuracy International has a, has a piece in the back as a safety. I think it's a Remington 700 action, and I could be wrong because I shoot blazers. And just haven't shot them this year, but too busy. Uh, and an accuracy, accuracy international style chassis, unless that's some kind of MDT that I wouldn't be familiar with, because I don't know the latest and greatest gear. But and it's got M or it's got it's got Kimon on it. Good for him. Mm. Um, but anyway, that, that guy's not fucking fired. That's a joke. That's like this fake shit that they that people well, put out there. Supposedly the the house um, sent a subpoena to the Secret Service Director, that lady, and the local law enforcement officer that seen the guy on the roof and then back down, he's supposed to have been subpoenaed, too, to testify. So this could be interesting. Oh, they're all... Oh, oh it was subpoenas. Everyone's like, oh, my gosh. Like, there's there's an investigation. This could be interesting. It's like, dude, everybody's going to be... Fucking, dude, I mean, I need to tell everybody, if you notice, nothing's changed if he's shown pictures because it's a crime scene. Like they're out there trying to find where all the bullets landed. Right. So someone tried to kill someone tried to kill a, a, a former president who could be a future president, and the secret the after action on this is going to be taught for a hundred years. The Secret Service as a job they collect attacks on high profile people and heads of states around the world because they're always looking for new things, and um, you better believe they're going to oh this thing will be fully documented and mapped they'll have laser images of like everything like forever and i'll tell you what we got and i i hate to say this because no one's really thinking about this but you watch all the drone attacks that are going on in ukraine you know they're they think these civilian dji drones and they're hunting these guys down they're running them down these drones are going even the drones don't even technically have to hit the people they have such fragmentation grenades we're we're going to be heading for a crisis with drones in this country because you know if this if if people were to able come up with I don't I don't know what the secret service can do to defend Trump or any president I guess I say Trump I'm just assuming I don't know what they can do I mean I know they've got you know ways to disrupt signals and you know possibly different ways to physically hit and go after drones there's even been like some people messing around shot long barreled shotguns have been showing up on the battlefield in ukraine so people can shoot them at drones like you're hunting for birds because a lot of people you can't really hit them with your ak um but it's like man like some of these drones like again joseph r he's like some of these small drones they race them around i think he said they can do 170 miles an hour wow can you just imagine like one of these drones coming in? I think wasn't there a drone attack? A drone came in either against Maduro or who was the guy before Maduro in Venezuela? I forgot his name. Um, what was that guy's name? The one that took over the country? Not Maduro. Maduro's his flunky bus driver. I know. Um, who, I'm, 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 I'm. Right. Chavez. Hugo Chavez. One of those two guys, I think they were up on a dais talking, and there was an. Ex- they all of a sudden they were looking up in the air, and something went flying, and, and they jumped. And I think it was a drone had come in, but it went off course or whatever. I mean, there's, I, I mean, unless there's some solution to these drones, you may see drones become highly controlled in this country. You may see a situation where they don't allow any drones for personal use without like heavy, 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 heavy heavy licensing that are like way more than like two pounds. Like I think, I mean, every drone, if you watch what they do with these drones in, in Ukraine, and these are like off the shelf cruise missiles off the shelf. (laughs) 
Yeah, oh, they no, are. I, I mean, it's I not know, like it's, this. It's funny. It's, I mean, none of this, sh- none of this, sh- none of this shit is like a billion dollar missile project out of the skunk works that took, you know, 20 years to develop. It's like, it's all DJI. And, you know, it's like, ooh, like, I, I don't, I, it, I would not be surprised if a hundred years from now, people are talking about the 2028 National Drone Registration Act, the way we talk about the 1934 National Firearms Act. I don't know. I just, I don't know how this, what the answer to this is, but I, I feel like there's a big collision coming. And we may end up in a situation where basically any, any public official who's going to talk, talk to a large group of people outside is going to end up being behind some kind of crazy thick bulletproof, ballistic proof, bomb proof netting or something and like glass and like they may have situations where they have to build like these little bunkers around a president who's talking and he can dive into a bunker or something you know or dive behind a wall you know what i'm wondering um not as as uh as far as a bunker goes i wonder if trump is going to be standing with three-sided bulletproof glass tonight for a speech wouldn't be the first time no i don't know are you think are I mean, you think he will be open they they should have pretty good control over the um over the um, RNC, but I think it's going to come down to what Trump wants optically. I I think um, I I, but, I think he will because he wants to show that he's not afraid. Yeah, I th- I think he would. I I think, but I think that day's coming because they've done that with Bush. I don't. I guess they did it with Obama. I they sure shit did it with Bush in some places. Well, there was an attack on Bush, and we talked about it. On I put it on. I talked about it on an article. Um, There was an attack on Bush in Georgia. Georgia, the country, someone threw a grenade at Bush and whoever he was with, the premier, president, whatever, the the shit old country. Um, And um, it didn't go off. And they prosecuted the guy. But I mean, that I mean, that could have I think Bush was behind ballistic glass, but they're not they won't. the, The Secret Service wouldn't talk about it. But someone threw a grenade at Bush while he was up there talking. Wow! And uh, I mean, it, yeah, and they they kind of downplayed it, like they didn't talk about it when it happened, and like like it came out a little bit later. So, yeah. So, well, we've been going for an hour. I don't want to keep things going on too long. No, it, it actually um, felt good to uh, bring up politics, but we do have to get on more of a schedule of doing these. You know, this this two month hiatus is uh, uh, no, it's a little long. I know. Um, we're, that's why the whole point, like one of the things of building all this out here, is so we could have more of a, you know, like we have such a controlled and inv- like we can do anything we want out here. Like it's like a giant studio. <laughs> like like if we want, if I mean no, but it is like we've even had a photographer want to do stuff out here because it's like yeah. You don't have to worry about noise. You don't have to worry about no. making everybody quiet. And and a, apparently I've learned a lot of places that do stuff with guns and they want to film it. They can't go to these public ranges because there's talking and shooting, you know, and it's like we we shut, you know, we're we're the, I'm ultimately the air traffic controller. You know, if I say you can shoot, you can shoot. If I tell people to stop shooting, the shooting well, stops. It's just now that simple. you have my uh, my mini house of ill repute ready you know it's uh <laughs> dude everybody comes out here everybody comes out here and it's like man you could have a party out here like i had the people because we moved the gym the gym is out here the company gym is here like like there's a gym out here well like, you don't have to worry about me using that <laughs> cybeck hammer strength you know i haven't used it like in nine months myself that's why i'm so fat now but um, like those guys, and they were like, man, like they were kind of, you know, it was like they're big guys, and you know, they load, they have to unload everything out of storage and set it up. It takes them all day, and um, they were looking like, man, you could, you could have some parties out here. And I'm just like, whatever. Then like, I don't know, like the uh, the dirt work guys were like, man, you should have like, 
Fourth of July, like cookouts and barbecues out here and fireworks. Oh. I'm just thinking every time people come out here, they're like, oh, we could do this and we could do that. Well, you know, and you're like, is it a ho shack? What well, do you, what do you call this? I, I, I personally remember more so than most that it was just supposed to be I, I, had, I in the initial build a cover for the tractor. You were talking gravel floors, just a shell, this uh-huh. and that. Now uh-huh. that you've turned it into the Taj Mahalki, you know, it's a, uh, it, and do you remember, I think you will. I forgot about the gravel. I forgot about the gravel. Yeah. Floors. You remember that on the initial stages when we were talking about it? And if you remember, yeah. <clears throat> who was it that told you bullshit? You're going to turn that into a, a full-time residence. And uh, who was right on that? It's not a well, full-time residence. pretty damn close. But, but I, have been, I have been out here for, two, for three days and two nights well, no, so but far tonight. I just week. want you to say on pod who was right. Come on, you could do it. Welcome back. Well, welcome back. To oh, the you hate right. to admit what I'm right. Danny, <laughs> Danny loves to spend my money, people. I'm oh, telling yeah, you right now. Mind, yeah. He loves so, yeah, to spend my Yeah, don't forget we have our dinner date next week, too. Yeah, we have to have our annual dinner. So, yeah, we're from Gravel Floors. We've got a bedroom out here. We have a full bath, bathroom. We're going to put a bathtub in at some point. I can't. High end washer and high end washer and dryer. Kitchen. Not a kitchenette. A kitchen. kitchen. We have a well. There's no stove, but there's an area to put stove and washer and dryer in if I want to. Um, I do have vaults out here if we do need to lock some shit up. Um, Some safes that you know people would see. Not not the big stuff. Um, We have zoned HVAC, (laughs) so we can run. We can run different temperatures in the. So, so the garage is climate controlled, heat and cooled. If I want, the living quarters is climate controlled, heat and cooled. If I want, all of it can be can be controlled uh, Wi-Fi because we have like badass fiber optic internet. I've got better internet here than I've had in the last two office buildings. Oh, I, I believe it. What is, and is I still have to resolve. I still have to resolve one more office is, building. Is still. the I'm still looking for one more building. The, tractor happy with its new accommodations yes because um i can you know i can grease it and get under it and right. tractors and the tractor never gets too cold never gets too hot doesn't get doesn't get hit a bunch of sun doesn't get rained on have you been tractors have you been good. mowing the shit out of the property no i've been too busy with oh. other stuff trying to keep you know getting like like all of a sudden like the amish there was a you know, they're like, there's a punch out list of, you know, like if you build a house, there's a punch out list. And so like, there's things that need to be punched out that they did when they constructed this stuff. And so it's like, um, they need to finish some trim in the bathroom. They needed to fix, uh, an exterior trim around the door. Um, the coyote door, there's a door and a ceiling that goes to a second floor that goes to the coyote door. So I can shoot, you know, we can shoot coyotes at night. Well, there's this ladder system that comes down because we don't have, we didn't put stairs in because it just takes up too much space. Well, there was something with that. I wanted changed. They had to come and change all that. So anyway, they have this big punch out list and they're like, well, okay, yeah, we can do that. We'll do it on, you know, on a day when it's raining and, um, no, when they're rain out days, I'm like, sure, that makes complete sense. I got no problem with that. And also with the weather, you know, like they probably want to work inside where I have eight HVAC. And they call at 10 o'clock this morning and they're like, uh, Hey, we're on our way to your place. Um, to do the punch out list and they're calling me cause they're thinking, you know, I can let them cause I can open it, open the doors and everything remotely. And, um, you know, I was like, no, I'm here, but it's like, holy cow. Like all of a sudden I had Amish all crawling around here today. So, but, um, I'll tell you what though, it'd be interesting cause we, I think, I think the Amish are, we're going to be friends and, um, I've agreed to wear a straw hat and they like gun shows, you know, but they can't drive. And so maybe like we'll get together and I'll take the man and all of his sons. Uh, we, we ride down to like, you know, show of shows or Louisville National Gun Day and, you know, 
you know, we'll all, I'll look like an Amish person and we'll walk around and John 1911 will be making an appearance, you know, sur- surreptitiously buying stuff. And, you know, maybe the Amish will, you know, end up in some of the social, I don't know. I don't, I think the Amish might not be allowed to do social media as a matter I think about it. It's probably like not, not allowed. <laughs> so I try to be real respectful. Like, I don't know what that, sometimes I, sometimes when I talk to them, I go, wait a minute, I just want to say this. If what I'm about to say seems disrespectful or wrong, please, I apologize. I don't know what the rules are. So, like, I've noticed, like, did I tell you about the girls that came here to the bar? Were they clothed? Yes, they well, were clothed. Well, you, know, um, you know. They're, they're Amish, not – they're Amish girls, not Catholic uh, girls, hey. okay? <laughs> I said I'm Catholic. Hey, uh, so, so uh, – I, I, Remember, well, you know, I married like, a Catholic girl. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I'm Catholic too. So, uh, you know, I show up here one day, and like the Amish are here working, and there's two little bicycles laid up against the barn. I'm like, what are these little bicycles? And there's two females here, and you know, the the Amish are like up high working on. They're doing the 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 pine in the living quarters, and they're calling out sizes. And then the girls go and they cut the wood the sizes and hand them up to the scaffolding. So the girls are doing the cuts and the gopher and the girls, you know, they know what they're doing. They're cutting the stuff exactly. And the boys are doing the ceiling and the walls and everything. And, you know, I noticed the Amish girls and I can't tell their ages. And I didn't know this until later. If you see an Amish girl with a white bonnet, she's unmarried. but She could be a minor too. Or if you see an Amish, if you see an Amish female with a black bonnet, I believe she's. I think that's what you would consider like their wedding ring or like what they show. One of these girls, so they could. I don't know. If the, I don't know if these girls were thirteen or if, I don't know. I don't know if these girls are fifteen or twenty five. I you just. I just couldn't tell. They're all short, and they're wearing white bonnets. And they. I don't think they ever actually said a word to me. Wow. You know, like I try to be like, I'm not trying to talk to them, be like, hello. And like, I think they might go, mm-hmm. like, there might be a thing where they're like, I'm not allowed to even talk to them. Like, it might be like a Muslim thing. Like, I, I, I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but, I, you know, I, they may not be able. I'm, I'm just trying to be real careful not to just disrespect right. these people. You well, know what I'm saying? And I, exactly. I feel like there's some stuff you don't I don't know. Their know. Culture. Yeah, I don't know their culture, and I'm trying to be. And I tell you what, they're awesome. Well, I love the Amish. I, yeah, I can't um, wait to. I can't wait I'd to always, see it. Yeah, I'd always heard like crappy things about the Amish from people secondhand. Like in Virginia, where I was at, there was never any Amish down there, and I would hear these stories, and I'm like, okay, well, like they seem nice to I me. Mean, whatever. They, I mean, I saw, you know, um, you know, they they seem nice in the movies. But um, these people out here, they're they're dynamite right. people. I love them. I, I love them. I, I, I put it this way. Okay, I'm going to say this, and I'll, I'll get off the Amish thing. We'll go to the police spot, and we'll toss it. So, to, okay, in the closest town, unless I want to drive to, like, the bigger town, the closest town, which is still, you know, a little bit of ways, there, there's a grocery store there. And it's like, you know, whatever the name of the – it's something chain you've never heard of. Like, it's just like a little regional, whatever, little grocery store. And I went into it. I've been in it once. And it even has a little deli counter and whatever. It's just a small, it's like a grocery store that I saw growing up as a kid. Not like the big Kroger's and stuff. I was in there and, you know, it just, it was like the stuff wasn't as good and the selection wasn't as good. And a lot of stuff seemed kind of cheaper stuff and, you know, whatever. Like there's no boar's head or, you know, like whatever. It's fine. And. Like, I'm going to go check out, and there's a person in the checkout line checking out, and this person is tweaking, is just tweaking. You know, this person is on meth and just tweaking, and they're trying to check out, and they're just, you know, you just tell, like, if anyone's worked the streets or whatever, you know what I'm talking about as a tweaker. And I'm just like, you know, in rural America, you know, like, drugs are a problem. And so I just discovered the same distance away – but deeper into the boonies is an Amish grocery store that apparently has like all the really good stuff, at least for the Amish. And I've decided I'm going to go to that store 
because at the very least, I would hope I'm not trying to check out next to tweakers. Um, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, yeah, I think I'm going to the Amish grocery store and giving them my money because I don't want to have I don't want to go anywhere near. That's why I don't do bars. Like I just don't put myself in a position because, frankly, I'm going to win. So there's no point to like, I just don't, I'm like, nope, it just, it's a big note, brother. I don't want to, I, if there's any, anything. And I'm just like, so anyway, so I'm excited. Like I found an Amish grocery store. Not that you care. I don't know what else. I, I, everyone's tired of hearing my story. Okay. You ready for the police? Yes. Water? Uh, I haven't heard one in months. <sighs> okay. So. Hold on. Do we have a multiple? Do, Are we do, doing multiple do. choice? No, no, no. I've got, I've got three. The first one comes out of, let me do the, come, there's a, a story, a woman where, let me find it. I'm not as organized. And I apologize. So this girl, the, the media is calling her Barbie. Barbie lookalike crashes BMW into Popeye's and makes a bad decision. So this girl, she runs her BMW into a Popeye's restaurant. The blonde-haired woman dressed in a short pink dress and white heels. Like, it's the middle of the day, and it looks like she's wearing nightclub outfits. Like, typically, if I saw a girl dressed like that, like in the middle of the day, I would think it was a Russian girl. And if you think I'm being a dick, I can show you some of the Russians in Cincinnati. Um, so the blonde-haired woman dressed in a short pink dress and white heels is filmed stepping out of the luxury vehicle and dramatically being seen in a now viral TikTok video. Uh, nearby strangers offered to help her out of the car while one asked, how the fuck did that happen? Uh, and th- then he urged her to run and leave the car. And so she decides to, she, as she ran away, the woman said, I can't get charged with that. I got to go quickly. Let's go. Let's go. And then she said something, gathering her belongings. She told the man, a man filming, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, so much for real before she utters, I can't go to jail. I won't last there. You know, I won't last there. <laughs> leave that car there. Come on, leave the car. And so anyway, you know, it's just this funny video of this girl, this little dorky girl, um, who, you know, ran her car and decided I'm too pretty for jail and it goes running off. And you know, you know it's, this is in due fashion and due course. She's in jail. And I got a picture of her mugshot. So, when you were when I when you were young and I was young, and you know, do you remember any? Well, I don't know any like you would see couples, um, you know, like uh, like maybe they had a tumultuous relationship, a boyfriend girlfriend, you know, like she's a screaming whatever, and he's a jealous whatever, and there's just all this drama. Right. Have you ever, you ever oh, seen that? You know gosh. what I mean? Like yes, this a lot. Of, yeah. What would be the – short of murder, what would be the worst thing you've ever heard of a domestic dispute between a young couple in a college dorm setting or college age that, you, that, you're, that you're aware of? That I'm aware of? Yeah, like in, in the, the real, real world, world, like you've that, ever been like, uh, oh man, like I can't, I can't believe you know he smacked her, and I can't believe she, she, like I knew a girl that rammed, she caught her boyfriend cheating at a nightclub, and she went out to the valet, and she got her car, and then she saw his car parked, and she was ramming her car repeatedly into his car, backing up into his car. She was a stripper, he was a businessman, and there was about 20 year age difference. Gee, I don't know how this happened. And then, you know, she's, and I'm like, yep, that's what you get, brother. <laughs> she's ramming, and like everyone's trying to pull her out of the car. She's locked the doors, no one's got anything to smell. It was a disaster. What's the worst you've ever seen? Two, two lesbians that lived together. One of them came home and lesbian number two had a girlfriend over there, even though she was living with lesbian number one. It wasn't a cat fight. It was an all-out panther fight. I'll never forget, as long as I live, they, you think drunken sailors? Because these two, it's like, of course, I was standing there egging it on, but it was... uh, (laughs) <laughs> that's the worst I ever seen. Did someone call the police 
and the police roll up and like, quick, get the guard. Well, starts they didn't the call water. the police. Shh. Get yeah, away from each other, a bucket bitches. Of water on them. Um, they didn't call the police because there were three of us watching for at least 10 minutes. We were waiting for the outcome, very sadistically. Le- lesbian privilege. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. I heard one of those women went on to become a member. She of the did the one that's five foot three. So, so this one is so the one that I have for the police blotter. Boyfriend waterboarded, raped, held prisoner, girlfriend in her dorm. <laughs> a man who accused. I got. I'm again. I'm not diminishing the rape and the beating. And like I'm. I'm not. Like that's like that is really fucking bad. I like, take you out behind the barn and just shoot you in the head. Fuck you and horse you rode it on. But I gotta admit, waterboarding, I was like, whoa. Like, like when you like tied her down and then like elevated her feet, and then you literally waterboard. Because waterboarding actually requires a certain kind of setup. You know I know what I mean? exactly. Like if what you've ever actually I, been I I know exactly what waterboarding is. So uh, but for the listener, so a man who accused of raping, whatever, blah, 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 has reached a plea deal. That will see him jail for seven and a half years. Uh, Keanu, so his name is Keanu, like K-E-A-N-U, Keanu, like Keanu Reeves. Labate, 20, of Granite Falls, has pleaded guilty to men in charge, secondary sexual. He admitted to choking and sexually assaulting the woman who was his new girlfriend in her dorm at St. Catherine University last September. Uh, and it's like, it's like his new girlfriend? Uh, and waterboarding? And I'm like, what the, like... After finding, t- let's see, hold on. According to the complaint, Labani went to the campus on Thursday to visit his girlfriend of two months after finding text, pictures, and social media content that, quote, infuriated him, unquote. He took her phone and began his campaign of brutality. Oh, boy. At Saint, a Catholic school, St. Catherine's. Wow. I think it's Catholic school. Yeah, wow. So the third one is, and this is the... Um, this is the the piece de resistance. Uh, this is. Do you like military vehicles? Um, uh, doesn't matter why. Well, I mean, like, do, if you ever wanted a military vehicle, like, if like, if I said, "Hey, would you like a tank? Would you take it?" Um. Nah. You maybe, take it out to the farm. You take it out the farm. Maybe, and drive maybe it up and down a our, uh, our gun heavily ranges. armored Humvee. You know, living in the Chicago area. Do you know what? Do you know what a hand I, truck yes, is? Yes, I do quite well. So apparently, in let's see here, St. George, Utah, in some national forest in Kane County, there has been a. I guess they're considering a. There's an old half track. And it's partially stripped. It's got the tracks on it. It doesn't have a bed, but it's got part of the cab and, you know, and and whatever. And apparently it's been out in the woods in this national park for like 60 years, if not longer. So to store, and so, and like the, the park rangers, no one knows how it got there. No one knows where it came from. No one knows anything about it. It's just like, but it's become like a landmark. Oh, it's the half track or whatever they call it. St. George, Utah, a historic half-track military vehicle stolen from the Dixie National Forest, an area managed by the Fish Lake National Forest, was last seen in Kane County. Law enforcement investigators continued to request public assistance locating it, and the white truck and tour reporter used to haul it out of the forest. According to the press release issued by the Forest Service, police are searching for a white Dodge Ram 2500 heavy-duty pickup truck with gold trim. It has two black screen grates over the grill on the front and aftermarket tires. Or is pulling a PG brand gooseneck trailer. Uh, article was taken by a concerned citizen. A photo was taken in this article by a concerned citizen who spotted the half track while they were on the road and unable to get the license plate. So basically, this thing has been abandoned in this park for at least 60 years. I don't think it belongs to the National Forest. I think it belongs to the government. I don't know who, who added out there. Well, you know, someone decided, hey, man. I know where there's a half track. Let's go restore it. And they just went and took it. And like, they're looking for over 70 years. Utah rep uh, used. Okay. Oh, for over 70 years, Utah rep Carl. I got more information. Carl Abrex's father, father, Torville used the vehicle to haul freshly cut logs to the Torville Albrecht sawmill in Bicknell. He and his crew worked the half track 
to harvest beetle kill spruce and, and ponderosa pine from the boulder. Thousand late. Last year, you logged on top of Boulder Mountain. So how long has this thing been there? Missing vehicle is part of a historic archaeological site determined eligible for a national register for historic places. So I guess I hate to, I hate to say this, but they're trying, but it wasn't part of the national register of historic places. And it's just a pile of shit. And like, if there was an old Winnebago and someone took it, would you be running the dude down? No. If they're an old Ford F-100. What are you going to do with a freaking half track? The half tracks are actually valuable. If you can, um, uh, I bet you, I bet you a fully restored half track is worth that $200,000. But where, well, I'll, number one, how could you ever get a title for it? Or if somebody, you know. <laughs> you don't need a title because you don't drive it on oh, the ridge. That's right. Well, also, they may have taken it thinking it wasn't going to be an issue. Yeah, because it sat there for so long. It's like, I like, I, I'm telling a story because one, it's interesting. And two, it's a half track. Three, I love Kelly's Heroes and I always think of half tracks and I just always wanted a half track. Uh, and four, I'm, part of me is like, man, I don't know. I'm like, you know, all you hippies want to clean up the environment. I just think they cleaned up the environment. Mm. So, well, this wraps this wraps up episode 345 of the John Knights and Love podcast. If you want to see the stories or pictures, links, everything we discussed, please go to the website at johnknightsandlove.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good Bye-bye. day. Bye-bye.